distinguished concrete technologists, eminent engineers, architects, project managers, my young friends from the engineering fraternity, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you and welcome to this historic city of Hyderabad. I deem it a privilege on my own behalf and on behalf of government of Telangana that Mr. Tom Sindrick and his team of the world of concrete have decided to come back to Hyderabad once again to make this prestigious event in Hyderabad happen. Government of Telangana and government of India are committed to make this world-class event an annual event and we will extend all support to the world of concrete and ICI to hold this exhibition and annual event, lot of technology summits in Hyderabad as a permanent venue. It's my earnest appeal on behalf of the government of Telangana. Today, we have to reflect with exploding human population, with democratic processes spreading to every nook and corner of the globe, with the revolution of rising expectations, the requirements of human beings have exploded manifold and it is becoming extremely difficult to match the expectations of better human living conditions with the existing technologies. Perhaps we require another quantum leap and a great technological revolution in concrete technology as it happened with Henry Ford in automobile industry and as it happened in the last few decades, be it in IT sector, be it in telecom sector, a lot more revolutions have to occur in concrete technologies the way we are looking at concrete technologies. It's no more, especially my younger friends from the engineering colleges, you have to appreciate that we can't live in isolation. If you want to become a simple technologist, it has limitations. You have to, on the one hand, push the boundaries of your scientific and technological disciplines. And at the same time, you have to interact with a variety of cross disciplines. Today, concrete is basically seen as an intermediary product. But go and explore the market outside, the kind of opportunities that are available, okay? be it housing needs, be it roads, be it bridges. If only we are able to improve this technology, improve this intermediary product to a final product, okay? then the whole scenario will change. The kind of opportunities you get, the kind of marketing facilities you get will be a completely different scenario. Think of, for example, the kind of development that has taken place in terms of initial reinforced concrete, later PSC, RMC, self-compacting self concrete. You take it further, what do you require for a bridge? What do you require for the houses? If you are able to produce all those precast products in a factory environment, huge large-scale factory environment and market it, actually the whole scenario will change. The opportunities will open up like anything. Boundaries of your knowledge, interact with marketing guys. There has to be a good interaction between government and technologists, technologists and finance guys, technologists and marketing chaps, technologists and media people. Because if we talk about these things in an esoteric environment, it doesn't reach a vast majority of the people. The kind of revolution, the kind of innovation we are doing in the world of concrete will have to be known to the common people through our media friends. For example, in Hyderabad, all of you are aware the kind of innovation that we have brought it to this country in terms of construction techniques, a world apart. For example, an elevated metro station was always constructed 
in C2, as a portal structure, you have one pillar in the middle of the road, one pier on one side of one edge of the road, another pier on another edge of the road. A three pier structure, a portal structure, I have every kilometer, I have a metro station. This metro station for about 140 or 150 meters long, you will have almost like a tunnel you are covering earlier. The challenge I pose to my LNT engineers, it's one of the best firms, you know, internationally reputed construction giant. I said, why should we have a portal structure for an elevated metro station? Why can't you make it a cantilever, balanced cantilever? The struggle came up with a beautiful solution. We have taken inspiration from a bird. We have what's called a spine and wings concept we have developed. We have first of all standardized the metro stations. Every metro station will be 140 meter long, 20 meter wide concrete structure. With that, the composite element, depending upon the road width, if it is 30 meter road, at the end of the 30 meters, we are going to land our staircases, our escalators, our elevators. If it's a 45 meter road, at the end of the 45 meter edge, you do that. If it's a 60 meter road, you do that. With that, the whole process has changed. It's not one-upmanship. Go and please have a look at any of the metros project that's happening in the country. They are built in situ. The entire street was completely closed for building a metro station. You give support from the bottom, from the road level. You lay the first level, concourse level, in situ concrete flooring. Then you keep on watering it five times, ten times a day. Okay. It looks like as if it's raining ten times a day and the road gets spoiled. This is what a metro, elevated metro is done elsewhere. Here, you have seen the difference. The whole thing is precast. Please, youngsters, please go and have a look at our two India's largest precast yards, one at Upal, 72 acres of uh, Upal precast yard. The other one is at uh, Kutbulapur. That's about 62 acres of precast yard. It's like a factory kind of an environment. Absolute quality control QA, QC systems are established there. And it's a completely different experience. You kind of, the kind of product which you're all seeing in Hyderabad, people ask me, so how are you able to construct such a huge project taking only least space? That's possible because of the precast technologies which we have brought to this country. Second aspect is, I keep telling my engineers that we are not simply building concrete structures. Concrete structures are being built all over the world. But look at our great, magnificent buildings, okay, which were built in Europe centuries ago, in India centuries ago. The kind of beauty, see, be it Taj Mahal, be it uh, Charminar in India and the, any of the great European structures in different cities, be it Rome, be it London, be it Paris, and the American structures. How beautiful this, the structures that were built centuries ago when technology was not so developed. To make them a reality, you have to think differently. You have to improve the technologies that are available. You have to absorb new technologies. You have to think differently. You have to think innovatively and you have to participate in the nation building of this great nation, okay? This is an opportunity for you.